Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I am a Western astrologer and Twin Flame channel. And this is a video about the energies of the Aries full moon happening on uh, October 13th, 2019, 5.07 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time, 2.07 Pacific Daylight. And um, I guess that would be 11.07 Greenwich Mean. This full moon is a very interesting one. Um, normally, I record the general video first and the twin flame video second for those who are in divine partnerships, twin flame connections. However, this time I was guided to do them in the reverse. So... If you're watching this first and you happen to be a twin flame or in a divine soul connection, I encourage you to go watch that one first and then come back to this one. <laughs> Normally it's the other way around, but um, the messages in that one were pretty specific and very potent as it pertains to relationships. I'm not going to dip too deeply into relationship stuff here in this video, but um, if you know you're um, in a soul connection or a twin flame connection specifically, that video is going to illuminate a lot of what's going on behind the scenes for you. Now, in this chart, um, an interesting thing about this full moon uh, that stands out to me right away is that uh, Jupiter is out of the retrograde zone on this full moon. So Jupiter went retrograde this year between August and um, April, April and August of this year. And one, here's Jupiter up here at the top of the chart. It moved back to the 14th degree of Sagittarius. And it's got, it moved forward back again to the 20th degree. 20 degrees was as far as it got before it started to turn backward. Now it's back at 20 degrees with this full moon, and it's going to now go past that 20 degree mark and move forward in time or move forward in the sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the sign that governs our truth, our higher ideals, um, our goals, the things we want to work toward. And with, Sagitt with Jupiter, its ruler going direct in its home sign, you would have noticed that there would have been some delays in opportunities, some blockages um, as you were looking for growth toward uh, those now, uh, those opportunities. And those opportunities and that growth is now coming off of hold and it's now ready to move forward in your life where things have been a little bit stuck you're now going to start to see forward movement and progression energetically. Part of this has to do with the fact that under the light of this particular full moon, there's a lot of truth being revealed, not just um, because Jupiter is moving forward and the sign of truth past its retrograde zone, but also because we have... Um, this full moon being illuminated by a sun pluto square and mm, not just that but there's a t square here between pluto sun and moon the saturn energy is also making a t square here to some degree because saturn and pluto are acting as a singular unit this year along with the south node to kind of bring karmic cycles to an end for all of us in the sign of Capricorn there's some truth and some illumination about the things that we're ready to bring to a close this year so that we can start 2020 kind of fresh and strong uh, and start 2020 with a recognition of the truth, capital T, capital T, the truth. With Venus and Mercury in Scorpio, um, you know, Scorpio is a sign that really governs the alchemy, the transformation points, the exchange points. Scorpio is one of those signs where 
you know, there's opposite at Taurus, which is all about life um, and perpetuating life, perpetual life. Scorpio is about the transformation, the alchemy, where one life becomes another life, where things change, shift, and move. With Scorpio energy here for Venus and for Mercury, Venus being the things that we're attracted to and drawn to, Mercury being mind and communication, and Scorpio being alchemy, what's interesting is that there's this draw toward that which we need to let go of, that which we need to release, and a consciousness about what those things are. This consciousness is made even more powerful by a Saturn sextile to this particular Mercury and this particular Pluto out here sextiling the sun um, or squaring the sun, I should say. This energy here is having the discipline to look at the truth. One of the challenges that this entire year has had with this Jupiter retrograde is there's been a desire for what's true to be other than what it is, a desire for us to mm, want to see that there could be an easier way, um, especially with the Jupiter-Neptune square this year. There has been a desire to look for the ways in which, gosh, that can't be right. Is that really it? What's really going on? That can't be it. Let's let's just let's just give it this a little bit more time and see, or let's just give give this a little bit more energy and see what's what here. But now that Jupiter has come out of its retrograde zone and is sitting in the light of this full moon, making harmonious aspects both to the moon and to the sun from that sign of truth, um, yeah, <laughs> you can't, it, there's this energy of not really being able to hide from the truth anymore or manipulate what's true or what's untrue to be true because it feels better. There's just a lot of motivation to capitalize on the truth and start reflecting that in our outer worlds as it pertains to work. That's Capricorn, uh, which is where that kind of reconstructive energy has been happening all year, where it comes to family and where we live, the home structure, our roots, and our identity in terms of family, that's cancer. And then by squaring energy, where it comes to ourselves and those we partner with, that's Aries and Libra. This entire year has led to this particular culminating full moon, which is showing us, hey, these are the things we're going to have to let go of and really kind of let die in the name of letting what's real and what's true and what's love live. So this could be expectations. It could be um, what it looks like to me in the most general sense is uh, some ways that we have perhaps resisted growth when it comes to our relationships and our partnerships that we're now coming to a place of recognizing, oh, <laughs> I guess I can't skip therapy. <laughs> oh, I guess I can't skip uh, coaching or this difficult conversation or um, there's not going to be any way around uh, being and speaking the truth here with this kind of energy in the chart. It just requires a lot of self-honesty. And this particular energy of this full moon is bringing us all back to a level of self-integrity as it pertains to the people we're dealing with and the work that we're doing. <sighs> it's a big one. Um, this particular full moon 
uh, is showing us that which we can no longer hide from. Um, because with the sun square Pluto and the moon uh, tension here, there's a lot of motivation to do the right thing via releasing the things that have run its course. And that's been a big theme for this year is taking a look at what's run its course and letting it go. Being honest about what's dead and gone, what's over. Um, now for some of you, this may be a business because Capricorn really governs business structures. Um, and in particular with the North Node, South Node transiting Capricorn and Cancer this year and the eclipses on the Capricorn Cancer axis, for some of us, this is about stepping out of family businesses, winding them down, um, or transferring a family business to a family member who's more equipped to run it than we are. Or um, this could also be about um, creating a home-based business by moving into a home that can actually allow us to run a business there. By square, because that's Capricorn, Cancer, those are the opposite signs, but by square, this energy is also showing us um, places where how we have been in relationships or how we have been with ourself is compromising. So how we've been ourselves like uh, or within ourselves, some of the ways, some of our behavior, some of our patterns around communication, around um, showing up, around emotional vulnerability and transparency. Some of that under the light of full moon is showing us why and how our relationships have not worked the way we have needed them to. Some of the ways in which we've been in relationship, some of the ways we have overgiven or um, some of the ways we have under uh, undergiven are now becoming starkly apparent under the light of this full moon so that we can move in the direction of change, move in the direction of laying those patterns uh, that are held in place by our ego structures to rest um, so that we're able to have more fulfilling relationships going forward. This is not an easy energy. The mirrors being shown to us right now in any of the areas of life that I just mentioned make us want to move like now. They're, they're, they're really uncomfortable and they're lighting a fire under the booty. This is the right time to see what's needed, but the time to act is going to come a little bit later this year. Um, and you're like, how much later? It's already late, <laughs> but probably like December, November, December is when the time to act will come. Cause what we're waiting for is this final lesson that's coming up here with Mercury going to retrograde in the sign of Scorpio, which is the final retrograde of 2019, the final Mercury retrograde, I should say. And this will be the third and the last Mercury retrograde this year um, because they, interestingly, have all happened in water signs. This is going to bring forward the final piece of emotional truth, the final piece of the emotional puzzle. So as much as we are probably ready to pull the trigger on certain things, um, you're, there's, there's, hey, just a little bit more information yet to come to light once we get into the Mercury retrograde season about our emotional truths on certain subjects that will help us to act in a judicious and fair way, which is what uh, all this Libra energy is going to ask us to do in the first place is to pull the trigger in a way that honors us, but also honors the truth of our connections, whether they are evolving, whether they are coming to completion, or whether they are continuing. Uh, there's a energy here of um, needing to act in integrity uh, with all this 
Saturn-Pluto energy out here in Capricorn. So let's see. Yep, with the Venus-Mercury sextile to Pluto-Saturn. So here's Venus-Mercury uh, in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio has a sextile to Capricorn. Um, this is really being, this is the draw to let it go like now. Like it's hot in our little fingers. We want to drop it. <laughs> like this sucks. I'm out. <laughs> There's a draw to drop it so that things that we're really drawn to can live. Um, again, hold. <laughs> if you can, get the truth that's going to come out of the Scorpio season retrograde first. And once you've gotten that truth, you'll the final nail will be in the coffin and it'll be time to run, not walk to your nearest exit. So yeah, this is, it's a really good, powerful full moon, a very powerful full moon where we're all being asked to step into our emotional integrity and into our truths so that um, the right things can live in our lives. We've also got Venus opposite Uranus here. This could really be surprises um, in love, but it could also be, um, you know, just kind of inspiration from the divine showing us where and how some things that we may have been doing with our body is not aligned with what we've been doing with our emotions or where our emotions have been at. And this full moon is showing us, okay, we're out of alignment, time to come into alignment. So uh, yeah, if this is a really, if you're not normally considering yourself a twin flame, given how much relationship energy is here in this chart on the Aries Libra axis, given this full moon is in Aries opposite Libra where the sun sits and we're in Libra season, I recommend having a look at the twin flame video. It's a little longer, but it'll help illuminate some of the things you're being asked to learn at this time and the, the potential steps forward. If you'd like to have a look at where and how all of this plays out in your personal chart, shoot me an email at chrysalismoon at gmail.com, K-R-Y-S-A-L-I-S-M-O-O-N at gmail.com. The calendar is open to book appointments between October 16th and 31st now. About half of them are booked, but there's another half still available. You'll get an autoresponder with all of the details you need to book. As long as you don't have any questions, feel free to shoot your payment over and I will shoot you all the scheduling information you need as early as Friday um, of the week before this full moon. So if you're listening to this the week after, just go ahead and shoot your payment over and I will give you um, a link to go ahead and schedule yourself, assuming there's still time left. Thank you so much for watching, sharing, subscribing, and liking. I look forward to hearing how this resonates for you in the comments.